combining stitches again uh, for this week on the stitch journal and I'm actually going to use some cruel wool if you don't have cruel wool you could split down tapestry wool if you haven't got either cruel or tapestry wool uh, use three strands of stranded floss that'll be perfectly fine um, I just thought I'd use cruel wool because I haven't done it yet and I'm also going to use this very narrow ribbon and this is two millimeter ribbon I haven't actually used it before it's still sealed up um, I got these years ago from a shop that was getting rid of craft uh, supplies and the six and a half meters on there and it was one pound so I took advantage of that and actually bought almost the whole lot and when I asked the lady how much to have them all she couldn't believe I'd buy them all but she only charged me five pounds so I got the bargain of a lifetime however it is polyester ribbon it's not silk it is polyester and that's a lot more affordable these days but I've never had to buy any more since so that's what that is so I'm going to take these things off there and I'm going to start along this one here I've got a cruel needle actually so it's got a large eye a sharp point and I need a larger eye because I would like the cruel wool to be pulling through the fabric without any problem and so I'm just going to take some out this is vintage stuff as well it's Penelope Cruel Wool that I'll have got from somewhere. So first of all, I'm going to come up near the edge. And I would like to cover up this raw edge, really. So I'm going to come up here. And I think I'm just going to do a blanket stitch. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to make sure the loop is lying on the grey fabric and I'm actually going to do different lengths because I'm intending this to look grassy so that'll all help so I don't know whether you'd call this uneven blanket stitch or just varying lengths of blanket stitch but just do whatever comes into your head if you want to do something long something short even if you want to angle it, it doesn't matter. I'll angle that one in because the effect I'm aiming for in the end is grass. So I'm just going to carry on going various angles, various lengths. And I'm going to work my way right the way across. Just making sure I don't pull anything tight. For anybody new to stitching, you should be getting good at blanket stitch now because we've done quite a bit of it really. But just all different sort of ways of doing it. Just hopefully you can see that there's no set rule. You can do what you want. If you want to do a wiggly blanket stitch or a very neat blanket stitch, it's absolutely up to you. There's no rule that says it has to be a certain length or width. The only rule really is to be a blanket stitch, you have to be coming up through the loop. That is the only thing that makes it a blanket stitch. If you do anything different, you'll be doing a different stitch. Nearly there anyway. Right, I'll add the edge. Just going to go down. I'm probably just going to finish off what's in my needle by going back along. And I'm going to go back along with some straight stitches here and there. I'm going to take them up, I'm just going to make a little stitch, come down at a different angle, I'm not really having to come right the way down to the bottom if I don't want. Just feel what you want to feel. And I'll just use this piece up. Maybe I'll go and take a little stitch back and then take it onward again. Like a long tall grass. I 
and another one very tall. I can go whichever way suits me. Take that one down into the bottom. There'll be stuff on top of this so don't worry about the long stitches as long as you're not um, crunching up your work by pulling too tight there will be no bother at all they'll be anchored down by whatever goes on top of them I'm just going back and splitting that stitch there one more stitch I think and I'll finish off just by threading underneath doesn't have to be anything dreadful so I can see that there's a grassy, a grassy verge happening so I'm going to take one of these bits and it'll add depth because I've used the dark to make the black background and if I put the light one on top it'll immediately add depth to the whole thing. So I'm not particularly bothered at the minute that the dark green didn't go all the way back along. I'll just carry on with it really. Come up. Go down, just sort of think about grass being all over the place and going every which way. Doesn't, doesn't really have to be particularly thoughtful. You can just let your mind go with the stitching really. I'm not going to take my stitches past the loop of the blanket stitch so when I'm going right down to the bottom I'm making sure that I'm within that loop there. I don't want the stitches to show down onto this grey. And if I've got a stitch that's short I can either split it or I can just go over it so that you can't see that it hasn't gone down all the way. I like that. Oh, work back along and all I'm doing is setting the scene for the bunny flowers really you could be doing this in a hoop if you wanted to but I feel when there's a few layers of fabric it is quite easy to just hold it in your hand but if you prefer to work in a hoop just put it in a hoop, it'll be fine. Right, I have worked along but I've still got plenty of thread in my needle and I always tend to try and just use up the thread. I'd rather not have half lengths. So if I can, I just carry on stitching and just use the whole thing up and then the tip of it goes in the thread jar. Obviously, if you don't, if you can't use it, well, that's a different thing. But then it would go on my tangle. But at the minute, I'm happy to put more of this light green in, just crisscrossing them to make a grassy, meadowy sort of a frill along the edge of these these two patches. And they're just straight stitches going any which way. What I'll do, I'll, I'll trim these little bits of threads off when I'm finished. I definitely don't want them there. So where this green hasn't gone down the bottom, I'm just going to make sure that I lay this stitch in that covers that up. Like that. And I don't work from the bottom all the time because then there'd be lots of thread on the back. I make the smallest stitch that I can to make the next piece that I need. So when this thread is down at the bottom, I just go along a little tiny way. And when the thread is at the top, I can either, I just usually come up anywhere, but then I choose, should, do I go onwards or back down? I think this time I'll just go onwards. Come back down a bit there. And I'll let this stitch go right down to the bottom. And I think that's definitely it. 
so that can just get woven along. So I now have the basis of a nice little bit of a picture going on there in this little a little scene. So next one I'm going to use the ribbon. So ribbon has to be put in with something called ribbon stitch. I'm going to get a different needle. I want to get this longer one with a wide, but it's very sharp. I'm just going to cut myself a piece of ribbon off. don't really want too long a length of ribbon. This is quite narrow as well, because I don't want to be making something that's too huge. If you don't have ribbon, go back to using maybe all six strands of floss, or cruel wool, or tapestry wool and but I would still say the tapestry wool has to be split so to put a knot in the bottom of the ribbon you need to really do a quilter's knot because it won't roll between the fingers so I'm just going to hold the tip across there across the needle wrap the ribbon around a couple of times maybe I'll do it three times hold that all together and pull my needle through until it gets right to the end and you will have a knot and I do usually just take the tip of it off I don't like that little tip going out so I just usually click it off so I'm going to put some daisies on I'm going to use ribbon stitch I'm going to use a pen again just because it makes it really obvious for you so I'm just going to draw myself a little centre and I'll draw a couple Maybe I'll put a daisy down here, and one there, and one here. So I've got five daisies going on. So I'm going to come up in the middle, on that, the edge of the circle. And to do ribbon stitch, you lay the ribbon on your fabric. You decide how long your stitch needs to be. And then you actually pierce the ribbon itself, which anchors the ribbon down. If you just go down like that, sometimes it can twist, but sometimes it just doesn't make a very nice looking stitch. I do do that sometimes, especially if it's in a background and I do it for big leaves, I just do the stitch straight up and put it down. But for a flower, I'm definitely going to do ribbon stitch. And I want these daisies to be maybe centimetre and a half. So I've laid my ribbon down. I'm going to po poke my needle right through the middle of the ribbon and pull the ribbon through. And as it gets to the very end, you'll find that, I'll just get a hold of it, you'll find that that ribbon disappears and you're sort of left with a point. Now the temptation will be to come up here and do the next one. But actually, if you do that, you run the risk of the petals not lying in the right direction. They sort of go off the circle. And so I find that it's easier to either quarter it or third it, it doesn't matter, but space out your very first stitches. So it's more obvious at which angle they're going to lie. So I'm going to come out from that one going to lay my needle as if it's right in this right going through the center and then I'll get the same length right through the ribbon pull it down until it disappears and I'll come it doesn't have to be quarters it's just as long as you're spacing the first ones out I'm just going to go over the cruel embroidery I've already got pierce that pull your ribbon until it anchors through. Here we go again. Lie the ribbon down. Angle your needle towards the centre and then get your length and go through. And I'll do one more. I'll have actually put five in for my initial go round. So now, 
it's time to fill them in. So I can just carry on putting as many in between each gap as I feel looks right. And if you're doing this in tapestry wool either, it's the same thing applies. Go around with your first stitches and then fill it in, or what I usually call thickening it up. You sort of thicken up your stitches. I've only got one stitch in there, but maybe I'll get two here. For a daisy, it's not going to matter, is it? Because they have multiple petals. Again, I'm untwisting the ribbon as I lie it down so that the petal itself is not twisted. It doesn't matter if the twist is going down through the ribbon. It matters that you lay your ribbon in and that the petal itself is flat. And so we just carry on. You don't really have to mark them out or anything. Just keep going. Might get this whole daisy done with this one length actually. It should be quite good. There we go. And I'm going to just turn over, thread the ribbon through and weave it back and forth. It's the only way you can really... I don't like to put a knot in the back of the ribbon for fastening off. Now I've got a new length in and I'm going to do the same to these other four. Where they cross over other flowers, I'm just going to let them. It doesn't matter. In fact, it'll look really nice. I'm just untwisting that thread, making sure it's in line with the centre and down I go, through the ribbon, always go through the ribbon. Actually there's nothing difficult here at the moment, nothing at all, just straight stitches with either ribbon or wool. And that is it. I think I can squash one more in there. Just go down across them. You can see how my petals are lying beautifully out from the middle and that is only because I'm going and going around once and then thickening up. If I was to try and do it all in one go the likelihood is that they'd wander off where they should be. Because it's just hard to keep it like that. I'll finish this one off and then I'll go away till I've done the other three. Otherwise, otherwise my videos would be so long. Like hours long. I've been known to stitch. Well, the starling, when I did the starling. Was, I think I stitched for about 10 hours altogether. Definitely couldn't edit that down. Or maybe I should do a one where it's live. That would be interesting. Right, I'll finish that one off. I'll do those other three. They're looking pretty already. Got a little bit more to do yet to make that into just the perfect little like vignette of a little meadow or something. Um, I've got yellow cruel wool in my needle and that's because I've searched and searched and I don't have any yellow beads which is what I wanted to put there. I wanted to put one yellow bead and all I've got are tiny little gold ones. So I'm going to use the cruel wool and I'm going to put some French knots and I don't necessarily want one big one because daisies have a compound middle. And so I'm going to just do, I'll do two wraps and see what it looks like before I decide. Maybe one wrap will be enough. No, two wraps. And I might get three or four in here. It doesn't matter. I just know that I want more than one if I can. And it's just going to make a really nice little daisy middle. Maybe I don't want four. It's always better for odd numbers if you can. That's why I've got five daisies and not four. So maybe I'll just do three. Clustered in the middle. And see what it looks like. 
I think that's fine. Go up to the next one and another three two wrap French knots. And the thing is with daisies as well, what, what I've been calling petals are not actually petals because a daisy is what's called a composite flower and the flower head is not just one flower each of the yellow pieces in the middle or each of these what we're calling petals if you take a daisy apart each of them comes up with a tiny bit of the yellow bit attached because they're actually florets so they're in individual days individual flowers in themselves and so the yellow bit in the middle is actually called they're actually called disc florets because they're on the disc of the yellow and the white parts that we call petals are actually called ray florets and I've just decided that I'm going to use a bit of paint as well on these just to make them look that little bit extra and if you don't have ink tents use acrylics really watered down if you don't have either just use maybe you could use watercolors I mean it's not like this is going to be washed so I'd have a practice on something first I've never used watercolors on the fabric but I know some people do and if you don't have any of them then you could put a little stitch on the edge of each petal and they're looking super sweet I like all the wildflowers I like dandelions as well I did that thing with the dandelions last year I don't know whether anybody saw it it was a thing where you took the flower heads of the dandelions when the dandelions had gone over and you strung them on a piece of string or a wire and they opened up and I thought it looked so cool I thought I'm going to have a go at that and I did it and everybody thought that the seed heads would just come apart and I'd have dandelion clock all over the sitting room but actually that didn't happen it just stayed beautiful all summer long. I had it strung over my fireplace and I will definitely be doing the same this year. So when I do it, I'll show you what it is. But it isn't my idea. I, I just saw it online somewhere. And I just thought it looked so interesting. I'm going to get my ink tents out and I'm going to just show you how we can make them look even more extra special. As I say, use acrylics if you don't have them, if you don't have ink tents. I do love them, but they're not particularly cheap. It was a treat to myself earlier last year that I got them. And what I'm actually going to do is just, go, I'm going to pick up this little pink. I want it to be watery. I'm just going to touch the ends of not all of them but some of the petals or as we've just said the florets because that's what daisies are like they have pink at the end of their petals I'm just going to keep calling them petals now as I say not everyone but it's using the minutest bit of paint and I don't see why we can't just combine whatever we want to make whatever we want. So for me, combining a bit of paint with embroidery or slow stitch with embroidery or whatever else, it's just whatever I feel is going to give me the effect that I would like to have. So there's the pink bits in. It'll dry lighter, so I might go back and make it a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of green. I'm just going to drop it in around here. Just caressing the, the French knots. That sounded 
That sounded a bit posh. Ca caressing the French knots. Where did I bring that up from? There's more water than colour on my brush. Because I don't want it to be a hard line. I just want them to look pretty. I think. I think that little piece is done. I'm really pleased with it. I'm going to put a bit more pink on, I think. And I hold that up. And just see, I'm just dotting it on with more water than colour. And the colour will seep through the ribbon. And as long as you don't put too much on, it's not going to do any bother to the background cloth. It's going to make some darker, some lighter. There we go. That's all it needs. So that's one little seam treatment done. And the new stitch there would be ribbon stitch. So I'm going to do a bit more ribbon stitch. I'll just put this away. And I wonder whether I'll take that one. Or I'll see if I've got a wider one. I don't have a wider one. I don't have a wider one, so this one is going to have to do. So, I'll take a length off. This can all be done with wool or floss, if you wish. If you've got the ribbons, why not use them? So I've got this wider one, actually, I'll tell you how big it is. That is four millimetres, so twice the thickness of the white one. I think I'm going to do along here and what shall I do? I would like to do leaves. I'm going to come up on the on the edge of this bit and I can just I'm going to make a straight stitch. Do a ribbon stitch there. It may be more obvious now that I'm piercing the ribbon. And that the whole end of the ribbon pulls through itself and just curls down like that. It pulls it to a point. And then I'm going to come back here and I think I'll do I'm going to do I'm just going to do ribbon stitch all the way up. I'm going to do leaves. I'm just going to work my way up the seam. I'll do a straight one right up this right up the join. And then I'll come back a little bit. And I'll do two outwards. Just to make a leafy stem. Make sure that your ribbon is untwisted before you go down on it. Sometimes you just have to make a little tug to get it through. On a stem. And out to the side for the leaves. And just keep going all the way up. Put as many little leaves on as you want. I may come back and put more on, or I might not. I'm going to finish with one right to that corner. I feel I need to come up there again. I'm going to come up with the dark green cruel wool. I'm going to do <coughs> almost the same coming up again. This time I'm going to do chain stitches for extra leaves and I'm going to go in and around and on top of the ribbon and I'm just going to put them here and there as I like not in any particular not in any particular way just wherever I think I need to have one 
Don't pull it too tight because I want to see the leaf. Don't just want a line. And it's all it's doing is thickening up this seam. Giving it a bit of dimension with the different colours. I'm just going to go back down again. And I think I'll make some straight stitches. Just head them back into the stem. And work down. It may be that some of these will come onto there. I'll just split the stitch. Take a little branch out, go back in, and you see how just simple things are just as satisfying to make. I'm going to split that stitch there. As satisfying to make as more complicated ones. It's all about the effect that you get at the end, or the effect that you're trying to get more to the point. So just about out of my thread, maybe another long one. Split it, go onwards. I want to finish this little piece off with some forget-me-nots. And it's going to be five French knots in a circle and then a little tiny stitch of yellow in the middle. If you feel you can't do a circle without a mark, just mark five little points going round. If it gives you the idea of where the stitches need to be, you can just do it with a pencil. And I'm just going to do it on the long pieces that I've put out there. And I'm just leaving enough room so that when my French knots are in, I've got room for the middle. And we're actually going to use three different colours. I have got this mauve, pale blue, and I have this dark blue. And I'm going to do one or two of each colour to make the little French, uh, little forget-me-nots look as pretty as I can. So I'm starting with the very pale one in my needle I'm going to come up on my dot just because I've drawn them in and I think a two wrap French knot is going to be enough no, I'm going to do three just change my mind there and then you do whichever you like two or three whichever fits in with what you're doing and I'm just going to go my little circle three down not to the fabric pull the needle and I'm going to go straight across to this one like that Maybe this just gets two of the light blue. And I'm just going to go right the way up, putting my little dots on, and I'll come back with the other colours. Three wraps and down. I had enough thread left on my needle that when I'd finished doing the actual forget-me-nots I went back up through the stem and just put the odd French knot here and there as if it's little flowers that are nestling in among the leaves and I am just doing the odd French knots here and there in all three colours just to, you know, make it look like they're really blossoming So 
so I'm just about on the last ones. These are quite dark, these up here. I didn't put any light blue in them. I'm still just doing the three wrap down to the fabric and through. And I'm just going to do a few in a big sort of a group. You know how forget me nots have that curled up end where all of the buds are? Well, it'll just look like that. Well, that's the idea anyway. Especially when I get some middles in. So I've got, you know, a length left. I'm just going to come back down with a few. Here and there of these pinky ones, lilac ones. And then the final bit to do will be to put their yellow middles in. I don't think I need to do a full French knot for them because they're only little. I might just get away with a little straight stitch and not pulling it down too tight. And I think I'm about done. Last one, I think. I'm struggling for the length. Here it goes. Okay. Finish off. The last bit will be to put some middles in. Now I was going to use this yellow. But actually, I don't think it's quite suitable. So I think... Now look in my tangle first. Look at that. There, it's just come out ready waiting for me. I'm going to have that stranded cotton. And I think I'm going to use it as it is, which is how many? It won't have its full strands, I don't think. There's three in there. So I'm just going to come back and give some of them a little tiny yellow middle. So I really feel a French knot's going to be too much. So let's just see what a little tiny stitch that doesn't get all the way pulled down. There we go. Straight to the next one. Tiny stitch. And just pull until it looks good. It's like putting an eye in the birds. It's just bringing them to life, the little flowers. I always used to think when I was embroidering the, the birds, the minute the eye went in, that's when I captured him. Just going to put it yellow there for no reason. It's like a half of a flower. And I'm just hopping up through them. I'm going to put a few yellow middles in here because there's a quite a little group. Let's do one there. Do one here. And it'll just look like a little cluster. I don't think I need to do much else. Put a little yellow bit here. Just like the little flowers are peeking out. Peeking out from behind the leaves. Do a bit on there. And I think I'm just going to call that a day. One last snip. And that's me finished for this week, I think. So ribbon stitch has been the new stitch for this week. But actually, it's all been about combinations. That would make a lovely little card for someone. A little spring or a birthday card. You could stitch a whole piece on the bottom of a piece of fabric. And it would look super special. And those ones, well again... I think I'd take them into a circle like that and stitch them. And again, that'd look lovely anywhere. New combinations for this week. I think I really like this little meadow piece. The little ribbon daisies look so bonny and the bit of colour on them. I hope you're going to get that. Um, just makes them just a bit extra. And I think if you don't have paint, so you don't want to paint, a little... 
uh, one strand of pink going down the very end of the daisy will make just about the same look. I just like to combine whatever it is at the time. So I've got the daisies and the lovely forget-me-nots. So that, the crazy patchwork page is coming together really well. Anyway, what else have I been doing? I have not doing all sorts. I just don't have enough hours. I haven't been very well. But, so maybe you could hear that in my voice in the video. Anyway, I thought I'd show you what I'm crocheting because I'm just making it up as I go along as per usual. I had 200 grams of this, so 200 gram skeins of this absolutely gorgeous, um, it's called watercolour and it's merino and silk. It's been in my stash for years and I just was like, I need to do something with it. What can I do with 200 grams? It's so easy to just think, oh, I'll make a scarf, I'll make a cow. I just didn't want to do that. That's Misty trying to get out. So what to do with just two skeins of this really bonny yarn. So I decided, okay, just start and do some little crocheted flowers or something. So that was my little, just a simple crocheted flower. Nothing complicated at all. So I thought I'd just use one skein when I've run out, then I'll start the other one and whatever whatever I've done, I'll have to use. So what I've actually done is I've made a sleeve. And because I kept having enough wool, I've sort of carried on making it a thing. So I haven't done all the ends in yet either. So I've got a sleeve with a little finished off edge and once I'd done the sleeve part I just kept doing more flowers until I had a raglan up to my neck where I thought it would finish. So the idea is to make a little shrug for over summer dresses or over one of my pinafores. So that is all I can make with one of the hundred grams. I can make a sleeve with a, <laughs> with a funny raglan thing going up. So this is the second sleeve. And what I'll do when I've finished that, I will then decide which yarn can finish it all together. And I'm imagining just crocheting along the back and joining them together somehow. Or, confessionally, I might make a fabric back and have the crocheted sleeves going onto it. So I could crochet the sleeves onto a piece of fabric that goes along the back. I'm not sure yet. But... I just thought you might like to see what else I've been doing. I don't normally show crochet on here. And the other thing that I've been doing, so this is for those of you who don't see anything on Instagram because I haven't really been I haven't really been showing this on here, is my phonology wheel. Phonology just means that you're making observations of nature and looking at things and so I'll show you March. So I'm going to turn this into a book. So this is the front cover. It's going to be a circular book. So I've done January with sky, February with twigs, winter twigs, March has been spring flowers. Obviously I haven't painted March in yet but I do have my temperature average and the day length game. So that's going to be my front cover eventually of a round book. And here is what I've done so far. So, oh God, January. Might all be backwards on there. January, which was skies. So I was just observing the sky and painting it. And it was a lot of gray because it was January. February was winter twigs. And I got all of them from my garden except for oak, which I don't have an oak tree in my garden. And what else do I have in my garden? Something. And ash. I don't have an ash tree in my garden. But I saw them on a walk out. So that's why they're there. And so March has been spring flowers. It's looking very pretty. 
and all of them came from my garden excepting for this one here which is a mammalaria cactus and that's been in flower in my dining room for about the past I don't know four months or so and I was struggling to find a flower and then was walking past the cactus and I thought oh I'm observing it it can be on my phonology wheel and so the cactus here it is here the cactus went into the wheel but everything else is from my garden and really I started the phonology wheel to encourage me to get back outside again so April struggled to think what on earth I was going to have for a theme and I've decided it's going to be tiny things I haven't painted them yet but I've been drawing them in so April has started with lichen off the lilac tree the moss seed capsules and that, that's as far as I've got so far so and I need to paint them in anyway that that's that is definitely going to be something lovely if I can keep it up till the end of the year it means that I'll have a lovely record of the year sort of like doing the temperature blanket which I did do in about 2019 um, but different because it's all natural things but it's still a daily practice which I really like like you could have a daily stitching practice I've got a, a daily painting practice anyway that, I think that's all I wanted to say lots of things going on and I will just sign off there and say thank you for visiting Marion's World it's always lovely to uh, hear from you and see your comments and I love replying to them and thank you for everyone who who sends messages or support to my channel from whichever means I really appreciate it and thank you very much and I'll see you next time bye everyone bye